I had a kind of long day today. Lots of meetings and a fair amount of discussion and stress at some of them. But when I came home, I had asked Sister Merlinda, I have to eat early because we're going to have the Senegal tonight. So when I came upstairs, she brought up a tray with a delicious steak, some cream spinach, some fresh fruit, and it was wonderful. Uh, and I know besides what she served me, in the refrigerator, there's all sorts of meats and fish. If I had had grease over for dinner, I'm sure she could have served the, the crowd that's here tonight. There's an abundance of good things that are preserved in the refrigerator because of refrigeration. And you're probably in the same situation. You really don't have to worry today about food being spoiled unless it's left out. Another thing, when we finish praying tonight, it'll be dark. I'll go next door. And of course, there are electric lights. Uh, it could be pitch black outside, but all we have to do is switch on the lights, and I can skip up those stairs, and not fall and break my neck. It's taken for granted that we have light. So in the 21st century, we have refrigeration and electricity. But at the time of Jesus, when he was preaching, he didn't have much meat except on special occasions. In the uh, early, late fall, early winter, they killed lambs and things they couldn't feed over winter, and they'd have to salt them. The only way they could preserve meat was to have it salted. And then they might have meat to feed their children or their families and friends over the winter months. Otherwise, they'd starve. In Galilee, where Jesus did a lot of preaching, there were lakes. And of course, the apostles were fishermen. But if you catch a fish, you know, when you leave it outside for a while, it's going to stink. It'll be rotten. The only way they could preserve fish was by salting it. It was necessary for survival. Without salt, you could starve to death. And a lamp wasn't for uh, atmosphere, perhaps a little oil there. Probably was life and death. Roads weren't paved. Uh, you know if you're ever in a power failure, the house you're so familiar with can be suddenly, possibly you could fall down just because it's pitch black. Uh, the roads in those days were treacherous. People stayed home at night. So a lamp was necessary for survival. If you slept up on the roof, which many people did in the warmer weather, you needed that lamp to get up and down. A lamp kept your family alive and safe and well. So in today's Gospel, when Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, Salt loses its pain, it's good for nothing, throw it out the ground. You are a lamp. You're the light of the world. Nobody puts a lamp under a bushel. You put it on a lampstand so all can see. Salt and a lamp in those ancient days was the difference between life and death. And Christians are called by Jesus to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Uh, we are supposed to make a difference because we know the Lord and because we do give a tang to living on this earth and because we are, because of the truth of the gospel, we are a light that allows people to travel and live and come and go. At this privileged time together, at this cynical gathering with the sisters, let us hear those words of Jesus. The world may have changed with electricity and with light and refrigeration, but the truth of his words does not change. 
If we don't make a difference, we really shouldn't use the name of Christ. If we aren't ready to give the tang of the gospel to everything we say and do, and by our fidelity to the Lord be a light for all to see, we waste our time here under the roof of this cathedral. Let us listen to Jesus, and let us be that essential life difference in this world.